Laguna Niguel with Scott Pantel, the LSI conference. Man, look at the setting. Not too shabby. <laughs> Not too bad. Well, congratulations. Thank you, Joe. We're so happy to be here and to have the support of uh, the industry. It's incredible. It's a great feeling. Yeah, you do have uh, a lot of wind at your sails. I think a lot of people are looking forward to getting back on the field. You and I were chatting about that. It's, it's going to suppress the marketplace. Uh, nobody ever blinked, but we are waiting now. And for you to be the courageous one to get us back on the field, well done. Thank you. Yeah. It had to be done. Yeah, yeah. Somebody had to step up. <laughs> and you're an industry vet. That like so, LSI. I always get a lot of questions. What does LSI do? How is that connected to this conference? How would you best explain that? That's a really good question. What we don't do, surprisingly, we are not an event company. Okay. We are a med tech market research and advisory company. So our mission is to help venture funded startups all the way up to the biggest strategics in the world make good strategic decisions. And the way we do that is through syndicated research, through custom work. We hold this event to bring together all of our customers into one place to talk about the future of the industry and also to provide a platform for these innovators to get access to capital, to get in front of strategics that can help them get a technology out into the market. So really we're an advisory company. We hold this event, hopefully we do a, a decent job with this event, but really our goal is to bring everybody together and let's talk about the future and then let's make it happen. And this, this event has got some really interesting, I would say less than conventional presentations going on. So you've got your, you've got your investors here and certainly the emerging tech companies I've gone down the list a bunch of times in some great, great technologies and great entrepreneurs. But some of the panels you have going on are really interesting and I've not seen those subjects discussed before. So take us through some of them. So we, have, we do have a, a diverse mix. We've got a couple traditional venture capital, corporate investing panels that are key. Everybody wants to know what, what they're looking for, where they're investing. We have a panel that I'm really looking forward to uh, on Wednesday, in the middle of the day, and the focus for this panel is paths of four different entrepreneurs. How did they raise their capital? They've all had tremendous success, tremendous companies, but what was their path to raising their capital so that they can accelerate their technology and get it to market? So we've got Vicarious, uh, a big deal SPAC. We've got Proximy, tons of success raising capital. Care Syntax just closed a very, very big Series C. And we've got PavMed, who took a different, totally different path through the public markets. Mm -hmm. So the emphasis of that panel is to talk about the different ways you can get to the end goal. Um, in addition to that, we've got Chris Vellis, who was our keynote speaker last year, made some predictions that played out uh, in, in some ways a very eerie way. And he's here to come back and tell us you know, what, what to be looking for next. We've got Hennekins, Scott Hennekins, our keynote, looking forward to talking about uh, MedTech 3.0, and I think you might touch on MedTech 5.0. And then we've got other panels where we're going we're gonna to talk to innovators, we're going to find out what they're up to, and then we're going to see what, what's going to happen next. I love the lineup, while I have mad respect for the large strategics, and they always seem to take up most of the stage. Um, talk about who they look for, what they invest in, what they acquire, but you know, you talk about Adam Sachs with Vicarious, tech company, Nadine Hashash Haram, telehealth company, Vellis, right, with Meraki, uh, a, a very unique prop in the industry. So these are all super high tech, and I wouldn't call Chris a rookie in the industry, but some of the others, Adam is, Nadine is, and they've got front and center stage. Is that a conscious decision to go after some of the freshman, sophomore class coming up who may be the future of MedTech? I think it's a combination of a conscious decision, but because there's merit there. Mm. These, these CEOs are doing amazing things, but with, without a doubt, we feel like there is, a, there is a new wave of young, bright minds that need to be listened to. They're doing incredible things, they're raising capital, and they're gonna make a difference. So I'd say it's a combination of both a conscious decision and us just being very aware of what, what we believe is coming next. Yeah. And the strategics will be happy about that too, because they won't have the weight on their shoulders of having to sit on the stage and have you know some of them talk about what they're looking for. Now they're going to be able to see 
these tech companies that may even be, be beyond their comprehension or at least current business model about where they should be investing their money. And there's new money coming into the industry too. Without a doubt, in some way, this is a turning of the table. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. We'll have those in the audience that previously may have been on stage mm. and vice versa. Mm. So an interesting dynamic. And there's some big money coming in. I know you've got a couple big SPAC players here, right? Uh, you uh, uh, have uh, Palmasano's representation here, right? Privatera. Right, Privatera. In the house for sure. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple others that have uh, plans. We can't say who they are right now, but they have some plans on spacking it up sooner than later. Josh DeFonzo, right, with Lux. What do they go out with? 350 million? I think so, yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm excited to see the, the turnout. I'm excited to see the virtual engagement and certainly the conversations. Before we head out, what do you hope this show does and this conference does over the next few days for the industry? Our hope is that, you know, we've had these conversations for months now uh, with folks about it feeling like it's time to come back, like now's the time. And so my hope is that when everybody leaves here in three days, we've, we've reconnected with old friends. We've made some new friends. We'd like to see some deals happen. We had deals happen last year. I want to see some deals happen. But the ultimate overarching goal for us is we want people to go back saying and knowing and believing it is time. It's time to move. We don't forget about the past. We learn from it. But it's time to go to the next chapter. And I'm hoping that others will follow suit and we'll start to see more meetings come right behind us. You're setting a high bar here, my friend, especially with the location. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bud. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. Joe Mullings, Dragonfly Stories, TMG 360 Media, the LSI Conference, live from Paradise. Be well. <laughs>